Hello, this is, uh, well, it's Michael Pierce, obviously, and this is um, going to be uh, not a ramble, because the ramble had no subject, but this actually has a definite subject that I, I would, like to, uh, bleh, would like to talk about, and I'm not going to stop the video. I feel more confident in just sort of um, vlogging here, um, because I want to get the ideas out, and I wanted to get them out. Um, now, and I didn't want to kind of lose them in trying to write any kind of script or anything, um, because that m could be a possibility. What I wanted to talk about, uh, as uh, probably the title of the video will indicate, um, is FE and FI and um, a lot of things that are sort of associated with that. Um, and the reason I want to talk about it is because uh, recently um, like very recently, and most of you probably haven't, you know, uh, seen anything, but I've just noticed, and I've been thinking a lot about introverted feeling, uh, compared with extroverted feeling, and I've also noticed that, uh, a number of other people have been thinking about that, um, and have been, um, talking about it, and so, uh, specifically, um, what I'm thinking of is, uh, um, a acquaintance of mine, fellow, um, uh, contributor um, to the, uh, you know, as she calls it, MBTI nerd world, <laughs> um, uh, uh, Enid Patterson, um, who I've been coming to really uh, respect, uh, respect her videos. I think she uh, has a lot of very good insights, so definitely check her out. Um, and she just very recently um, uh, made a, a series of videos talking about FE into FI and specifically um, uh, championing, um, as I believe was actually her own word, championing F.I., and uh, pointing out a lot of things that I think I agree with her are very important to um, make clear. So this is um, uh, another voice. It, it's really more of me slightly compulsively saying, ooh, yeah, because I have never felt... Um, anywhere near 100% satisfied with how I've described introverted feeling, even even in my most recent videos. It's really only been in the last uh, few days, and even while making the ENTJ revisit video, that, um, and as I've been kind of studying Kierkegaard and trying to understand why it can be very difficult for me to, to, to really grasp him, um, and it was only when, really just today, uh, talking with an INFP, uh, a friend of mine, um, uh, uh, over Skype, and um, discussing FEFI with him, and kind of trying to explain um, the NFJ mindset and why uh, certain mistakes or problems uh, come up from NFJs, and then... Um, uh, just later today, watching uh, uh, Ms. Patterson's um, uh, series of uh, five videos about FEFI um, and sort of just running through her thoughts, um, uh, you know, kind of, kind of like, kind of like this uh, is the best way to describe it because that's what she does. Um, it's her method, um, and so. And, and watching those was kind of where I feel like it was really finally clicking for me. And I felt strongly enough about it that I wanted to make a video, um, if anything, to try to clarify some of the um, uh, misdirections, uh, false implications, uh, mistakes, you know, things that I feel that I've made in the past in describing FI or, or attempting to describe FI. And I cannot point out anything specific in past videos, it's just whatever, because I tend to be very general and abstract, um, but uh, in those in those past videos, I don't think I've said anything, uh, I, I do not believe I've said anything that is inaccurate in itself, um, but I think that there's things I've said that have had implications, very natural implications to them. Um, or might misdirect a person, and so this is sort of, sort of an attempt to, I don't know, provide an addendum so that they don't do that. So I don't know if that makes sense, because um, it, it's not as simple in my head as it just being, 
I screwed up, and this is my addendum, because I, I don't actually believe that. I think there's, um, you know, uh, but then again, I'd need to really go back and, like, study what I've said before <laughs> and make sure, because I can't remember every detail, unfortunately. I, the, some of the videos have been a long while ago, and I'm always thinking about them. So anyway, on to what I, uh, on to FE and FI and what I actually want to talk about in in this video, and really if I could summarize what I think is the point that I'd like to make and that I'm kind of just going to be elaborating and exploring, and I was actually pacing in this room um, for maybe like an hour before I actually turned on this camera and just kind of working things out. You can see all my drawings on the board um, behind me as I was playing around with this. Um, if there's anything I could say, and I, I believe I actually already said it in my ENTJ revisit video, but I'd like to just really emphasize it. And I'll probably provide some kind of a link or maybe just an annotation to previous videos just to, to say, um, hey, just so that people don't get confused, this is sort of a more recent um, me saying, this is how I understand things now. Um, and this is something that Jung himself said uh, that uh, I have echoed, but I don't think I've understood to the point where I've really been able to explain it properly. Um, and that is that, uh, specifically that TI and FI really are essentially the same thing, except that FI is dealing with values and TI is dealing with, for lack of better words, facts, um, factual in, or, uh, concepts, um, valueless concepts. Um, and that's really the difference. And in, in past videos, I think I have, and I don't think it's wrong, I think that there's truth there, but I do think it's very misleading that I, in past videos, um, I've talked about FI and the experience of FI as though it's more, um, and, and uh, I haven't intended this, but I, I think I've even said that it's, I've used the word primordial, which is kind of like, oh... It's really not the best word to use, is it? I don't think I specifically said primordial. I was just using it as a, a, a helpful word. But it, implying that it's somehow more primitive, it's not structured, um, and uh, that is obviously cause for a lot of misunderstanding because it makes it seem like a perceiving function. Um, so I'd like to try to, to help correct that by saying that basically um, all of the attributes that you can take from TI... Um, you can apply, and not just you can, but you should apply to understanding FI, um, introverted feeling. They're both rational functions, they are both structured, but they're just dealing with a very different content. Um, and they, they carry with them certain uh, assumptions and things that um, are involved with, the extra, um, bleh, with their, their paired functions TI and TE. Um, so I'll actually say, the way I'll actually say it is that everything that really applies to TI and TE and the ways in which TI and TE are different from each other um, and the way that I've described that, um, especially in my most recent ENTJ video, um, in, in you know the first part where I'm talking about TE and in the INTP video, I think in both of those I really got into TI and TE and comparing and contrasting them and trying to show how they see each other and the flaws that they see in each other, whether or not they're grounded. And um, really, I, I honestly kind of think now that a better explanation of both FI and FE, especially as they go against each other, is contained in the, how I describe TI and TE. It just requires switching the content around and making whatever adjustments are necessary for that. Um, so let me run through a couple of examples of, of what I mean by this specifically. Um, for instance, uh, one of the things that I, I described when describing TI and TE versus each other is that um, both of them are striving to be, quote, objective in the traditional sense of being objective and that, you know, they're trying to be correct and they are trying not to let uh, their own personal biases get in the way of the truth. But the ways in which they do it are very different, where TI um, 
uh, is, is striving to do this by not getting deceived by um, external things that are going on that to them feel very local. They're trying to transcend their local environment by getting down to the very essential um, uh, the very essential principles of things. Whereas TE is actually doing the same thing. They are trying to, to transcend what they consider to be the local um, biases of their own subject. Um, or even of their own small community, generally a more small area, and they're trying to do that by saying, forget the noise of what my own, uh, my own personal preferences are saying, I, I'm going to rely entirely on what external sources say that can be confirmed and things, because that is just, it's much more um, trustworthy to them. Whereas TI does not trust those sources at all because they don't feel, they feel that there's too much room for error there. It's the exact same thing with FE and FI, just with values and not with sort of facts and, and, and raw valueless concepts. Um, where, uh, and this is, and it's fascinating seeing how I'm very much biased on the TI side, I like it and I try very hard to make sure that I'm not letting that get in the way, um, that I don't ever let that cause me to devalue TE. I don't know how, if I've failed in that in places. I, I'm sure I have in little ways. I, I think I've done a pretty good job, but you know, um, but it's fascinating seeing how with the TI and the TE, I totally get the TI where it's like I do not trust external facts. I don't trust statistics. I want to figure things out for myself. And ideally, I want other people to figure things out for themselves and to present their logic to me. And I can communicate with people that way. But I don't understand or I don't like when um, uh, people, to me, don't feel like... And by the way, I'm going to apply this to FI and FE, and it's going to be crazy because I think it will really help to explain. Because in my mind, with TI, you know, my biased perception is that I'm thinking for myself. I am figuring this out for myself, and thereby I am being objective because I'm not listening to what anybody else is telling me about the subject. TE, of course, is kind of like, probably finds that a little insulting, um, probably, right, you know, rightly so, because in their mind, they are specifically trying to avoid, um, they see TI as like, very arbitrary and bizarre and um, or potentially they can feel that way because they're not referencing the outside world and they probably feel that they are thereby liable to errors that TE is not liable to, whereas TI accuses TI, TE of probably the same errors. Um, anyway, but applying this to FI and FE is fascinating how I get, I get that with the TI and the TE, but then when we move to feeling, necessarily it's reversed where when it comes to values of things, um, I don't trust my own subject. That's how I perceive it, understand, because that's a, from, from an FI point of view, they, they probably would say, well, that does not even make any sense, but this is just how I perceive it, um, is that I don't trust my own subjective feelings on things. I don't trust my own preferences or desires or, or evaluations of things that I perceive as just being from me, I want things to be confirmed and to have um, some kind of basis in what I perceive as the actual observable world. And what that comes down to is how other people are feeling. And what this, what this again comes down to is me feeling like um, it is noble for me to discard my own preferences on things. What, you know, I perceive as just sort of like these internal, kind of just, in my mind, primitive instinct, primitive instincts, you know, or just instinctual reactions that I'm like, no, I want to have control over those things, and I don't want those to control me. Very platonic, because I'm he's probably an INFJ. Um, there's a lot of other reasons for that, but... Um, so the, the way that I'll perceive things is that in order for me, in, in, in a sense, in order for me to be genuine, 
to what my actual values are, which are better represented by ti, but also, you know, the fact that I want, you know, I value um, other people, and because I, I want, I, I, I like other people, I love other people, um, my way of expressing that is, and uh, this carries its own problems with it, but my natural way of expressing that is by saying, I'm going to push my own um, either, either I'm going to provide a TI rational basis for my internal feelings and instincts, um, or I'm going to say, you know what, I'm not finding any TI rational basis for these, so I'm just going to set those aside. They don't matter to me. Um, they get in the way. They, they ruin my objectivity of figuring out what people really need, because I'm letting what I think that they really need get in the way. Which is, this is fascinating, right? Because when it comes to thinking, I'm the exact opposite. I say to myself, I want to think for myself, think for myself. You know, that's how I, I will envision it. And I don't trust the outside because it's the exact same way with FI. Um, where FI looks at it and will say, Okay, I un, you know they'll understand that there's that risk of um, the, or they can understand definitely understand the risk that you know the, the 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 catchphrase for them that I believe I actually used in a in a comment just just recently I think it might even have been today um, was that T I says think for yourself F I says feel for yourself. And even that's misleading, by the way, because that's almost in, that's once again implying that Fi is somehow more primitive than Ti, when really both of them could just as well say, think for yourself. And they do say that. Um, the difference and the reason why it's a, you know, that carries its own problems with it is because they still aren't doing the same thing. Um, and unfortunately, our language is such that the only other word I can think of May, actually, I think a better word might be evaluate for yourself. Um, and so, for FI, while they might recognize the possibility that you know their um, you know deep uh, structured you know complicated way of trying to figure and work out um, what should what should be evaluated, what shouldn't be evaluated, what is truly valuable and what is not very valuable, in this very TI way, in a very rational philosophical way, um, which unfortunately I don't think I've really attributed um, uh, to them uh, ever, which is a problem, um, but in this very rational way they are evaluating, uh, they're evaluating values, which is what Nietzsche does. Um, uh, and I think that's a very helpful way to view it, is that FI, I think a better way to view FI is actually in sort of this, and you can say whether or not you like this or not, but um, uh, is in this rational Nietzsche sort of view of reevaluating values. Um, I'm not saying that that's what FI always is doing, but you know, it, it carries with it this more philosophical, rational sense that I think is 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 essentially what it is and is not, unfortunately, uh, widely understood. And um, so I'd like to try to chime my voice in there because I think this is a more fruitful and more accurate way to view things. So continuing on, uh, you see this dynamic where I, I don't think like that. Um, I'm not comfortable with that because for whatever reason my preference is um, that's hilarious in my preference. <laughs> Uh, but you'll see that I will generally try to be objective by saying I'm going to, I perceive me having this preference, I perceive me having this sort of passionate feeling, so unless I can come up with a, a abstract TI groundwork in my head that will justify it, I'm going to, in order for me to be objective, I'm going to say I'm going to push these feelings aside. and. As far as I understand, FI doesn't do that. Now, you got to understand that that does not mean that FI doesn't, you know, do things like push aside feelings that aren't useful and stuff, but they don't perceive it that way. And I'd go so far as to say you, you, they do things differently in a different way that has its own validity to it and has its own problems with it, just like TI and FE does. Um, FI uh, 
you know, FI does not, uh, you know, actually, honestly, I don't think they, they don't push away those feelings. Um, rather, they are developing those feelings in sort of this TI-ish way um, where they are really trying to rationalize, you know, and that's why it's troublesome because I, I still don't know uh, the methods by which this is done because I don't have FI and I, I also don't want to confuse it too much with TI and I, I think that's why in past videos I've, I've been trying to emphasize, okay, what is the difference between these two so that they, we don't start getting them confused with each other? And I think they're, this, the fact of the matter is they're more simple than I generally tried to make them to be, but I assumed that, okay, TI is where all of the structure lies, where the rationality lies. This is about structure and logic, and FI is more about feelings and emotion and stuff, and I, I think that fundamentally that is an um, uh, extremely misleading way to go. FI is structured and TI is structured. They're both introverted rational functions. Um, and uh, I guess the best way to posit this is to say that, because uh, the only way for me to really make sense of it in my head is to say that, okay, for them both to be structured, there has to be a level of structure that's apart from how TI prefers things and how FI prefers things, and they can, they're both working off of that. Um, and they, they diverge from each other, but anyway, that's sort of me just trying to uh, get it to make proper sense to me so that I don't have future contradictions. But I think that this is a very helpful way, excuse me, sorry. I wanted to throw it out there and some of, you know, I want to get into some of the implications in a moment here, uh, more implications to it. But I think that it's, that all of, setting all of that aside and saying that, okay, I think that the most helpful way to view Fi and Fe is quite simply um, a mirror of Te and Ti, almost identical except this content is different, that the one is dealing with values and the other is dealing with um, uh, pure concepts, uh, valueless concepts. Um, I want to say facts, but I know that that can be a confusing word, so um, let me see. Um, yeah, so just going backtracking a little bit, I've, I actually have some notes here so that I can try to stay a little bit on topic. Um, but just backtracking so I can kind of work through some of the implications of this and some of the differences and try to understand why. Um, it's not really a wonder why they get, they can get very angry at each other. <laughs> This is the part of typology where you will find, I think, the most frustration and passion by virtue of the very fact that it is about the things that are the most related to frustration and passion in the first place. It's the feeling functions. Um, it's about values. And so this is where people get very, this is where the values lie. And so it's, you know, you're dealing with uh, you're, you're going into a room that's just full of explosives, no matter who you're going into, you know, and so it's kind of, you know, it's, you've got to be, got to figure out how to do that. Um, there's a few things I want to point out is, is, uh, to FE, just like with TE and TI, and as I described in the video, to FE, FI is, um, FI will treat things, uh, just like, TE will feel that TI does. Um, uh, the extroverted, maybe an easier way to say this, is the extroverted judging functions. The extroverted judging functions feel that the introverted judging functions um, regard things, as, regard certain propositions and things um, that they've reasoned out for themselves and regard the proof of that as though it had universal, obviously universal validity by virtue of, um, you know, the way that they, they figured it out in their head. Uh, that's definitely how TI works. There might be deviations there for FI. You'd have to let me know. But they, the extroverted judging functions feel that the introverted judging functions will propose things as universal that are not at all universal, are actually subjective, are um, affected by unrecognized, um, unstated subjective desires, and um, 
<coughs> terribly sorry, uh, excuse me, um, that are affected by subjective arbitrary desires, both for T and T, TI and FI, um, and thereby it's basically local to their own subject. Uh, but they'll be very frustrated and annoyed with them because they'll be acting as though these things that really only they see as making sense, um, at least from TE's point of view, uh, they'll be acting as though they have sort of this universal application and justification from just this one person. Um, meanwhile, the introverted, the introverted judging functions will view the extroverted judging functions uh, as also being subjective because they are, you know, they aren't trying to figure things out in this way that there's no possible way it could be incorrect. That's what TI, I, you know, I believe is generally, that's what it's doing. And I believe what FI is, is doing in its own way um, is uh, uh, they feel that these extroverted judging functions are putting too much trust in their necessarily local environment and what they are limited in seeing and will also themselves treat certain propositions that they really only learned from their local environment as though they were absolute truth. And um, both of them will be very frustrated with the other because they will feel very strongly that um, this is how I understand it for myself, that they are, by extension, potentially harming other people or causing problems because they will refuse to recognize that their basis is, um, has this glaring flaw in it. When, of course, they themselves also have a potential glaring flaw, but because of this preference, this underlying preference, in order for them to operate, it's kind of like, well, this is how I operate, so I can't really worry all the time about, you know, I, I can only apply so much worry to um, the potential problems here. Um, so, let me think. Um, uh, I just, oh, no, I think I can, yeah, I can upload directly from here, so I think I'm okay as far as time goes. Um, I don't think there's a problem. Anyway, I'm just going to keep going. There's a few other things I wanted to talk about. And one of those, by the way, is um, in saying all of this, I do not, and I'm, I'm quite uh, uh, strong about this, I, I do not want, because I think that there's a potential, and honestly, it, because honestly, the misunderstanding goes both ways. Um, and the, the, the uh, hate and the bad jokes go both ways. Um, the, that's just the fact of the matter. I'm sorry, but, it, it, you know, um, uh, both FI and FE, and it's the same thing with TE and TI, um, that, uh, you know, generally speaking, really any attempt to, um, to sort of uh, uh, rightly try to sort of rescue and help raise up one, um, unless I include something about the other one, it will, it, it, you know, unless I include sufficient amount about the other one, it will necessarily begin to devalue the other one and cause the same problem a little bit in the future. I want to emphasize a couple of things in that point. Um, and some of these are also mistakes that I think I've made that uh, I don't think that they're mistakes, but once again, there they're, they're are very clear misleading things. And, you know, there's probably just plain old mistakes in there. And, um, but I, I can't think of what they are specifically in any specific videos. Um, but one glaring one is the notion that I think is fundamentally, there's some, there's some flaws in it that are not inherent in it, but are just directly come off of it that in general the notion that extroverted functions, um, and I'll say this for all extroverted functions, but especially this is, is applied to FE and I've implied it towards FE because um, it's how I've been able to understand it in terms of the logic, but um, seeing FE as basically sheeple and seeing FI as um, the opposite of sheeple, and that applying also to TE and TI because of the sense of the sheeple, quote-unquote, 
uh, hang on to the objective factor whilst the individual does not, but it's an individual and figures things out for themselves. And um, while in, a, in, in the sense of the metaphor this is true and it's helpful in that it helps to direct your mind into what I'm talking about, but I think it especially becomes a problem with Fe and Fi. Um, because uh, I think it is a I think it is a fundamental mistake, and it is, in its own way, for the one to call the for Fe to call Fi selfish, or for Fi to call Fe sheeple. Um, frankly, both of those um, frankly insults uh, can and have been applied to both types. Um, they tend to be applied more one way than, than the other, but um, uh, frankly, they can both happen to both sides. Um, I will be as bold as to say that, and I'm going to try to explain examples of this, but um, neither side is actually truly safe from the flaws that can come from being overly reliant on what other people say or being overly reliant on what you yourself think. Part of this is because Fe and Fi necessarily operate with Te and Ti. So it's important to understand that in any individual, um, you have both of these sides. So actually, I'll probably need to rework some of what I just said a few moments ago, um, but uh, bear with me for a moment here. Um, Every individual, in order for them to operate, has both an extroverted and an introverted judging function in there. And um, it's a mistake, and I think it's misleading to say that somebody is... It's not a mistake, because a person can be dominantly an Fi type or dominantly an Fe type, but to imply that that is all that is in there, and unfortunately, I've kind of done this because the way that I've generally approached the inferior function with, I think, the exception of my sort of beginning attempt in the ENTJ video to kind of try to help correct this because uh, one of the things people have pointed out is in my videos, the, inferior, the part on the inferior function, while there, you know, uh, there's good observations there and there's good insights there, um, it is not as meaty as the rest of the video and um, it tends to, I, I've, I've always taken the view, which I think is right, um, but the, the perspective that the inferior function is um, uh, the, the only thing that it is is devalued, that the personality is not good at it, good at it, or whatever that's supposed to mean, that they devalue it, that they don't like it, that they have problems with it, when that's become more and more clear that that's actually not the case, really, um, generally speaking, actually the personality tends to, especially as they get older, but even in a young age, they do really value their inferior, inferior function. They wish they had more of it. They wish that they could exercise it more. And in certain ways, they do devalue it, and they, it's not as present in themselves because they're so focused on their dominant function, but excuse me, to say that they devalue the function, I think, is where it's a problem. I definitely value things that I associate with extroverted sensation, and I'd go as far as to say, like I did in the NTJ video, um, that uh, I actually, on a very fundamental level, um, my and I, my introverted intuition and my extroverted feeling are methods by which I'm actually trying to get to a better understanding and experience of SE. And so in the, and, and, uh, so, and I've seen that especially in Schopenhauer's philosophy where he'll say that um, the only reliable uh, source of information that we really need to get down to is extroverted sensation, is the equivalent of extroverted sensation. It's pure, unfettered, or um, pure objective perception. Is that he says that that's really the basis that we need to get uh, down to. And um, uh, Hume sounds like he says the same thing, but there's some differences, and I, I need to think about it and codify it a little bit more. But um, anyway, the point of all of that, that whole tangent, was that um, uh, 
dang it. The point of that tension I was talking about inferior function, I was talking about that because, oh, I remember, because the functions come in pairs, and so when you have an fi type, you are always positing the ti part of things. So one thing that I think was implicit in what I was saying before, but I would like to just officially say for those who've actually watched this far in the video, I'll have a table of contents or something to help direct you around, but, um, and like a, a bottom line list of like the main points that I just kind of want to say, okay, listen, this is what I really want to get out and I kind of work it through very laboriously in this video, but um, they always come in pairs. And so the one thing I wanted to say is I think one way of being able to gain insight into the other and be able to kind of help, uh, yeah, and it'll probably carry its own problems, but I found that I'm able to much better appreciate and understand FI unless I'm like completely off kilter with this. But if I simply say, okay, let me just take my experience of TI, which I'm extremely fond of, um, and just say, okay, this is what they're doing, but they're doing it with values, and say, okay, cool, and I just take all of the, you know, the things that people will associate with, like, the, the, the depth and the complexity and, and the individualism, because DI is very individualistic, um, and that leads into what I was, I wanted to say, um, back over here is that I do not want to devalue FE, um, yeah, I, I do not want to raise up Fi at the expense of Fe. I do not want to devalue Ti at the expense of Fi. Uh, I think I mixed up some of the functions there, but I think you know what I mean. Um, I do not want uh, to devalue Fe for Fi. And um, that's why I, I said that both types are susceptible in their own ways to certain things. That's why you'll find that from the one perspective, you know, both perspectives, honestly, I think are perfectly capable and from their own perspective justified in accusing the other of the exact same thing, which is what you get with TE and TI, who both accuse the other of giving into subjective local things, you know, very local data, whether of just their own person or of just their own little environment. And, um, of being overly subjective and not realizing that. And you get the same thing, both Fe and Fi accuse the other, um, generally speaking, of in a sense not being, uh, they can both accuse the other of not being sincere, in the sense that they can accuse the other of not really caring about other people. Um, uh, Fe definitely uh, can do this towards Fi unjustly. It can accuse Fi of not really caring about other people because they feel that Fi, um, by virtue of the fact that Fi is not relying on objective factors of what other people seem to be feeling to the Fe type. The Fe type is like, I literally, I am, I do not care what I feel when I talk to a person. I want to sweep aside all of my own feelings on a subject and so that I can let your feelings just flow into me and I can examine them. Um, and it, it, so it's a way of giving other people room to give me ideas, um, which uh, I, I know for a fact that that is not actually what's going on. That's the ideal, but it's slightly hypocritical because there's still these TI concepts there that are, you know, have, have, uh, uh, you know, you can't sweep out all the room. I, I don't know if that quite makes sense. I didn't express that perfectly, but, um, but the notion here is that FI or FE will view FI. And, um, let me just get into this right now that, um, uh, and I think this is a very good example is in my ENFP revisit video. I, I gave that example of the game of Mao and, uh, that was an unexpectedly controversial example. I don't know why it would have been unexpected. It should have been kind of obvious that it would be unexpected. Actually, I kind of did expect it would be. That's sort of a lie, actually. I, I, I did sort of expect that it would be controversial. I was just, but at the same time, I was still sort of surprised. Um, 
that uh, a lot of ENFPs were concerned about this, because, and, and for them it was kind of like, I would never do that. So the only way they could figure this out is by saying that, well, it must be an underdeveloped ENFP type. Now, before I go any further, let me just say what I've said to a number of people in the comments, that I don't think that was a very good example. I think that, uh, I think, I, I stand by the point that I wanted to make in that example. Um, but what I'm about to say is to say that I, I think the point I wanted to make is very much from a TI bias and is true from the TI perspective, but is not going to connect very well, I think, with the ENFP, I, I, I think is what's going on here. Um, although I do know that there's been some ENFPs who've said, you know what, yes, I have done that. And they may very possibly be uh, not giving themselves enough credit, and I'm the one at fault here, but um, I don't know, because INFJs have their own little uh, potential cruelties. Um, <laughs> this is just that everybody does. Um, we certainly do. Uh, anyway, where I'm trying to go with this, very slowly, making my way towards saying... Um, uh, that with that example, um, I was getting, uh, I'm sure you could hear, and I kind of made a little bit of a joke out of it, that I was getting a little bit passionate as I told that story. And I, I know a number of people noticed that it's like, um, you were like really upset. Like, did, did, did you, do you not like ENFPs or something? <laughs> it's like, no, I love you, I swear. Although I have, I have, uh, by nature of the sheer difference of the flip-flop, they both tend to love each other and get irritated with each other, uh, both just as easily, I think. Um, but in this case, I was getting, the point is, is that I was getting passionate, and now I look back on that and say, I wish I hadn't used that example because I was getting passionate about it. Because I still had, I, I had evaluation in that really in my heart of hearts, I feel that what the ENFP did was wrong <laughs> and was wrong and frustrating and stupid and all these bad names, you know, and very much from my perspective that I was very frustrated and I was frustrated because in my opinion, I felt that the ENFP, um, and, and as I said in the video, I felt that they were blind and I think that to what was going on, and I don't think that's accurate at all. Um, what was going on simply is, is well, there were a couple of things going on. One is I think that she, I was being overly sensitive and the ISTP, you know, she, I think, knew the ISTP a little bit better and there were things like this, but the reason I was upset is because I, th I thought that uh, she was letting her own um, uh, she was letting her own evaluations of things, her own highly subjective evaluations of things, um, uh, cause her to trample over the ISTP. This is how I perceived things, and this is generally where conflicts have arisen in the past between me and FI, and, and unfortunately I think have come out sometimes in the way that I've tried to describe it. Um, in, that, in that example, I felt, from this very FE perspective, that she was not regarding the obvious objective information that the ISTP was upset. When really, I think quite frankly, what was going on is that uh, she was perfectly aware of what the ISTP was doing, but in, in her judgment from you know how she knew the ISTP and how she viewed evaluations and things, this was not a huge deal. He was not actually that uh, freaked out about it, and he would, in fact, like the game uh, once he got into it. And so she's coming from that perspective, I'm coming from this other perspective where I say he is clearly upset. From my perspective, he's clearly upset. I don't want someone upset. Why are you being so selfish and blind? And I'm like, you can tell I'm getting really worked up about it. It like really like rustles my feathers because, <laughs> because it's this FI thing. And um, and that's a, and and the reason I'm telling this is because, um, firstly, uh, obviously I do have subjective passions about things. Um, everybody does, and I think that FI is. Um, I'll propose that FI is more naturally in, in, in tune with those, or at least is attempting to be more in tune with those. Um, 
but uh, and and I'm even I'm even not sure if I want to say that, which I'm sure people aren't sure why I. But um, you know, because I I think that if I can still fall into pitfalls that are generally applied to FUTI, and and I want to try to maybe give examples of that in a few minutes, but. Um, Anyway, uh, the point of that is that it is very F-E-T-I of me to say that I wish I hadn't given that example because my personal frustrations and passions about that event are blinding me to what was going on and make it so that I am not objective. Whereas while I'm sure an, an F-I preferring type would agree agree with that as a concept, generally speaking, as I understand it, they are viewing things more through the lens of their, um, their evaluations because they have taken all of this time to try to refine their evaluations of things. And um, in my mind, I refine my evaluations through this TI method and they do their FI. So I'm, I'm, kind, of, I'm kind of starting to crumble a little bit here as I'm I'm sure I'm, I'm trying to, to do TI things to help me to understand this that aren't necessary or are muddling things more than they need to, but um, that's at least from the perspective of, of FI, um, F-I-T-E. So um, let me actually do this really quick. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, yeah, you can see it pretty good. Um, so let me erase this and redo it. I want to just really quickly talk about extroversion and introversion generally, um, and especially how they apply to FE and FI. Uh, so you know you have extroversion, and I think this does. I think this applies to every function, and that's something that I have talked about, and you know from the very beginning, and I think I actually stated it best in the beginning. And I have added a lot onto it and trying to kind of uh, elaborate different parts and maybe muddled it, but um, uh, extra 